Welcome to this special edition of Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with the CTO of Skyworks, Peter Gamble. Welcome. So uh, we're hot off of uh, Mobile World Congress, where 5G and IoT were certainly the, the talk of the town. Uh, how is Skyworks addressing these markets? Yeah, and I want to say we, we're seeing a lot of action out of Mobile World Congress, too. And in fact, one of the few times in my lifetime where we're seeing a new technology actually being pulled in rather than pushed out. So yeah, you probably read a lot of the, in, yeah. the uh, announcements coming out of MWC that people really want 5G technologies sooner rather than later, which you know is exciting, I think, for everybody in the industry. But let's, let's talk about the two things that you mentioned separately a little bit, right? So IoT and 5G, they do come together, but let's, let's start with IoT and say it, how has Skyworks been involved? And really, you know, Skyworks has been involved in all kinds of RF connectivity, as you well know, for more than 15 years, right? So 2G, 3G, 4G, going on to 5G. When we were in IoT before, people called it IoT, right? It was Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee. So we're seeing two things in IoT, right? So we're seeing a drive towards standardization, so a lot of Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and a drive towards plug and play modules, so fully integrated modules. So IoT is just natural for us, a very natural evolution of our product line. You could say a lot of the same things around 5G, because what we see is 5G coming out in, in really two phases. One is the sub six gigahertz right. LTE type standards. Uh, and then the one people talk about is the new radio and millimeter wave technologies. Sub six gigahertz is really an extension of what Skyworks has been doing in the 2G, 3G, 4G space for years. Just more of the same, more complexity, more bands, higher power, more filtering, more switching. And particularly what you're going to see is more RF channels. So that's the MIMO aspect. So up to 4x4 four four MIMO, higher linearity with the 256 QAM. Separately, you're going to see millimeter wave come out. But we think initially millimeter wave will come out as more like a fixed wireless application, point right. to point or fiber to the curb. Again, Skyworks has been involved in millimeter wave technologies for you know, 10, 15 years, and largely with our infrastructure division, which probably doesn't get as much press, but has been a really solid growth area and one where we're seeing a lot of growth because of the need to densify the networks and some things that we'll talk about as we discuss 5G technologies. Right. So taking 5G, there's a lot of very high performance parameters, especially at the device level. Yeah. You know, how do you think we're going to achieve those for the RF device companies? The device level performance is really an evolution of what we've done. Now, when I really see 5G in the sub six gigahertz being driven towards, the thing that the two things that I see are the biggest changes are the drive towards subsystem integration and the drive towards multiple RF chains, which really drives packaging technology. When you talk about down at the device level, so what a lot of what you're talking about is higher bandwidths, higher order modulation. But in all honesty, these are things that Skyworks has already been dealing with because of our expertise in the 802.11 family right. of technologies. There, we're already addressing 1024 QAM, whereas LTE and even 5G is a 256 QAM. There, we've been addressing 80 megahertz channels, 160 megahertz channels, or even the entire now what people would call, the, the, what used to be called the Wi-Fi band, but now is licensed assisted access or enhanced licensed assisted access, which is a gigahertz of bandwidth, so 20% fractional bandwidth at five gigahertz. So our expertise in those areas really just folds in and will map perfectly onto what people are requiring for the 5G. Now, what I really think is gonna be a big change in 5G and even prior to that 4.5G is the drive away from the device level and towards the subsystem integration. We call the product family Sky One, but other right. people have their names. We're really, the people we used to work with were all you know radio hounds of some sort. They wanted to look at detailed transistor parameters. Now what they want to know is how many bands are you covering? Well, how much power are you radiating in the antenna? You know, does it interact with my software or firmware? So much more of a subsystem play where companies like Skyworks really handle all of the RF complexity, package, shield it, and make it to some extent programmable by the end user. Right. So that need that really drive as 
5G means that wireless is ubiquitous and in everything. It also means that it has to be easy to use so that the companies that are providing it are really have to provide subsystem integration. So those two aspects, I think, are really, really key. Yeah. And so turning back to IoT, there's a lot of low power, wide area yeah. networking technologies out there. How do you see that all shaking out and you know, how do you strategize your way into those different applications? Yeah, it, it's really a great question. You know, there, there are two things about it. One is the obvious. As an RF company, we provide solutions for everything. So, you know, it's, whether it's LoRa, Zigbee, Thread, 802.15.4, 802.11, you know, BLE, all these things, you know, we provide solutions for all of those. But I think as you look t towards the future, if you want IoT to be pervasive and ubiquitous, you need to base it on standards which are both secure and scalable. And to me, this leads you likely the winners are going to be standards-based technology, so that would put you probably in one of the 802.11 or .15 family of technologies, or in an LTE, and as LTE has evolved from what we traditionally thought of as cellular technology to the half-duplex CAT M1, CAT M2, and now under the 5G rubric, the narrow band IoT technology, again, all of which we provide solutions for. You're seeing this confluence of standards-based technologies addressing that same low power, wide area space. Now let me just say one thing because it comes up a lot in our general discussions because when people talk about low power, I have a particular take on this, right? Because a lot of times people say, well, low power, that means you don't need complicated front-end technologies from a company like Skyworks. I actually think as wireless becomes more ubiquitous, actually you know, high power becomes important because the last thing you want to do is walk up to your front door and try to unlock the door with your phone and it says, well, no, con no connection, right? You know, that's a lot worse than not than reaching in your pocket and realizing the keys aren't there, right? So even though it means short range, it doesn't necessarily mean low power. And even if you're trying to conserve energy from the battery, one of the things people don't think about, they say, oh, low power means, you know, low data rates. But really, if you want to conserve battery energy for the long time, what you want to do is have very high power, high data rate, bursty traffic. So you cache more and then transmit in short bursts. That's actually, in all honesty, the way to conserve right. uh, the battery, which means back to what we do, that means you need a high performance front end, both to maintain ubiquitous connectivity and in the end to preserve your battery life. So that addresses the low power uh, consumption area. Yeah. And how about on cost? I mean, for IoT, the cost is really going to have to dramatically decline you know, for the high volume devices. Uh, how do you think device manufacturers can address that? I think that's the rough and tumble world of consumer electronics. By the way, this isn't, you, you would know well, this is nothing new in right, the land yeah. of consumer electronics, right? You know, a lot of price pressure. A lot of price you pressure. Know. You provide more functionality, you know, so the cost per function comes down. It's like the way, Moore's law was actually first written was wasn't about transistor density. It was actually the you know the 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 cost per function. The cost per function will come down. Companies like us will provide higher levels of integration to keep our ASPs up. But you know that's just that's the natural evolution of both elect, yeah. of both you know the semiconductor industry and the consumer electronics industry. And I don't see the pressure that we see in IoT as unique as compared to our core businesses in smartphones or routers. You know, we address those and I think we're, everybody has the same pressures and I think it's no different from any other consumer electronics play. So taking a step back from the applications, uh, what do you see as some of the key technologies over the next few years? I sort of mentioned before that subsystem integration is going to be a very key high level technology and that means for RF companies there's going to be more programmability that's built into our functions and then as I said you know we're going to go from one RF chain to maybe four RF chains and of course the size of consumer electronics devices doesn't change or it changes a little bit so that means much higher packaging density. Right. Now one of the things which you probably well know about Skyworks is one level below that we are fundamentally a system and package house where we take a number of core technology blocks optimized for the function and are able to rapidly reassemble them on PC boards to deliver a variety of products. There's no question 
that filtering technology has become very important and is a really a hot button in the industry. Right. We actually firmly believe that with the evolution to 5G, one of the things people really don't talk about is 5G new radio is TDD by definition, so it actually moves us away from the FDD space, and that has a huge implication on the filter technologies. And again, you know, in the in the shameless self promotion, we feel actually puts Skyworks in the real sweet spot of addressing filtering for TDD, which is 5G by definition. Yeah, and you guys have like a white paper available pretty soon? We do. Yeah, our white paper and landing page for 5G technologies is going to be available in the next few weeks. And we think that this will provide a lot more detail for the type of discussion that we've just started here today. Great. Well, we really appreciate you coming on the show and hope to have you again sometime soon. Yeah, I look forward to it. Thanks for the discussion. Thank you. Thank you.